Hi, welcome to another EV Blab. This one comes from an Ampower listener on the Reddit forum, and we actually answered uh, this question on uh, today's Ampower that we uh, recorded this morning. So jump on over to the Ampower if you want to uh, listen to that. It'll actually be released tomorrow or something like that, but I thought it'd make for an interesting EV Blab discussion here and it comes from a user uh, called Vakash if I'm pronouncing that correctly and he's got a very interesting question um, hello I'm genuinely confused what is the point of learning basic electronics today uh, because you can get like really cheap Arduinos right Raspberry Pis processing platforms uh, you can get electric uh, imp Wi-Fi modules, Bluetooth modules for three. Uh, you can get Wi-Fi modules for three dollars these days. There's the new, um, you know, the Arduinos and Raspberry Pis aren't that cheap, but there's a like a new uh, chip Kickstarter with like a nine dollar Linux computer. Basically, hardware is pretty much you know almost free these days, and you can get plug-in shields and cards and all sorts of things to do. Create almost any project you can imagine. Or so it seems. So he, it's a good question. Why, if you can do all this stuff, and with the ecosystems and the communities out there around all these things, you've got source code libraries, everything else to, to do it all for you, why bother actually learning hobby electronics? What's the point? And, well, the difference is, do you want to be just a user of hardware, or do you actually want to create something? Basically, my definition of an electronics hobbyist is somebody who can actually do electronics. Plug in, you know, a Wi-Fi module into an Arduino and then write in some code. That's not electronics. I'm sorry, it just isn't. But that being said, well, it comes down to the practicality of it. Well, if I can do everything I want with all these boards and everything off the shelf and just write some code, well, why do I need to learn electronics? Well. There's some very good reasons for it. The first one is that you, what happens when something goes wrong? What happens when it stops working? Sure, you can go on the forum, some forum, and ask, my Raspberry Pi doesn't work when I do this, and maybe someone will come back with an answer, but a real electronics hobbyist should be able to troubleshoot something like this. So learning the basics, in particular, he uh, mentioned why bother mucking around with LEDs and triple five timers on a breadboard, for example. Well, just flashing an LED. What if you want to flash a hundred LEDs, huh? What about uh, uh, your power supply capacity? Just being able to calculate things. What if there's not enough decoupling on your power rail? How are you going to troubleshoot that? You just don't know. Right? Sure, you can maybe get some off-the-shelf hardware to, to do it and cross your fingers and hope it works, but when it doesn't work, that's when you need hobbyist electronics skills. To be able to troubleshoot, you have to understand, you know, you're just your basic stuff, your Ohm's law, your uh, Kirchhoff's current laws, your basic building block circuits, your basic concepts like power supply decoupling, all that, you know, all that sort of stuff. It becomes invaluable when you actually want to try and do something serious in electronics rather than just use electronics. You just want to, uh, but when you want to actually create something, and trust me, it's not hard at all to come up with an idea that simply is not really that possible or really that elegant using just all this off the shelf hardware stuff. Sure, it's good for concepts and things like that, getting things up and running really quickly. You just got an idea, you want to, you know. Uh, you know, tweet when you run out of toilet paper or something, sure, okay, that sort of stuff's possible, but hey, what happens when you want some sort of specialised interface, some sort of specialised sensor, something that hasn't been done before, something where you might find uh, that off-the-shelf code or whatever, it doesn't work and you have to start doing stuff, either writing your own code or more importantly, designing your own electronics. Just changing a few little requirements can easily put you in the realm of, well, I've got to do some electronics, I've got to know how basic interfaces work, maybe how basic protocols work, uh, you know, basic uh, power supplies, and can I supply enough power, what a low dropout voltage regulator is, why does my product fail when it, my little gadget fail when it drops below a certain voltage, why does it go erratic, all that sort of stuff. There's just countless things, and Vikash specifically mentions that, well, assume that I'm not building 
hobbyist boards for explicit sale uh, to consumers. Well, okay, that might be the case, but what about if your, your idea is really good and you go, well, I think I'll make 10 of these maybe a hundred, you know, maybe you go on a forum and say, oh yeah, I'll make a couple of these and then a hundred people want it. What do you do then? How do you build it? And that's the thing with electronics. It's always comes down to electronics engineers. We talked about this on the amp hour, Ele no matter how easy and modular and everything else electronics gets, electronics design engineers still have to make the final product because final products generally have to be specifically tailored in some way. You've got to do all your regular electronics engineering stuff. You've got to lay out a proper PCB. You've got to do your bill of materials. You've got to do your research. You've got to read data sheets. You've got to understand what the specifications are. You've got to uh, do design for testing, design for manufacture, all this sort of stuff. And that can be just for a simple product, even if you're making like 10 of them, it can be a real big deal. So there is every reason to learn all these basic electronics, taking your triple five timer, flashing your LED on the breadboard because you learn stuff. And I've always said the best way to learn stuff is when you fail. Because if you just take your Raspberry Pi or your Arduino and you hook it up to your little uh, Wi-Fi module here and you write some code and it all works, and the biggest thing that might happen is your code doesn't work, so you change the code. What have you learned? You haven't learned electronics. You're not an electronics hobbyist. You're just basically a programmer using some off-the-shelf gadgets. I don't even know the, if there is a word for that sort of, uh, you know, person who does those sort of things. It could be maker. I don't know. Well, it's not really maker because you haven't made anything as such in terms of electronics anyway. So what, what good is that? The whole point of being an electronics hobbyist is actually learning electronics. This is application stuff. This is not electronics. And it won't get you very far. It'll allow you to get up a couple of simple, you know, gadgets working or something like that. But beyond that, you're completely screwed. That's why it's vital to learn all your basic electronics. And hey, it's fun. People do electronics for fun. They like playing around with breadboards and building stuff up. If you just enjoy using your Arduino and hooking it up to a shield and, and making something, well, hey, great. More power to you, right? That's fine. But it's not electronics. And electronics on its own can be an end unto itself. It can just be fun. Or you can actually use your electronics design skills that you can gain by playing around with breadboards and when things fail. That is the way to do it. As I said before, the real learning with electronics comes from actually failing. And then you have to troubleshoot stuff, understand how things work, go back to your building blocks or your fundamentals. Okay, what's wrong here? Let's figure it out. Let's trace this circuit out. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I didn't put enough decoupling on there. Oh, my uh, regulator's dropping out. I've got to use my uh, test gear to measure all this stuff. And that's electronics and that's why it's still very important in fact vital if you're an electronics hobbyist you've got to learn this sort of stuff you've got to learn your building blocks and your basics everything stems from that even making the simplest change to your thing you've just your know, little widget that you've thrown together with a couple of off-the-shelf modules the slightest change to that is going to require proper electronics hobbyist skills. So yes, while in today's world, you can do an incredible amount of fantastic stuff without knowing any basic you know, electronics building blocks or any basic electronics knowledge at all. You can't go any further than that. And this is nothing new. You can do this, you know, 20 years ago. There were sort of like off the shelf solutions to put things together. It's like, for example, you can design a whole automated test system out of all national instruments uh, stuff, for example, and use LabVIEW with all its things and plug in all your national instruments cards and hook things up and, and just have it all work without knowing much, if anything, about electronics. But when you want to do the slightest bit difference, you want a different sort of interface, or you might need a, a custom amplifier on the front end to do something, what? you've got to go back to your fundamental electronics. That's what it's all about. So Nova Cash, it is not wasting your time to learn electronics fundamentals. It is absolutely vital and it can open so many doors that you don't know need opening yet. And you'll only come across those when you come across them. 
and if you don't have the electronic skills to back it up you kind of have to eventually learn so yes get your breadboard get your triple five timer get your lead stick it on there i hope it doesn't work and you have to troubleshoot it because then you'll learn something so there you go i hope you like this blab if you've got a different opinion if you agree or disagree comments down below go for it catch you next time